Have you ever thought about what a Pokemon food chain would look like? If we think about Pokemon in a realistic way, they all have to consume calories one way or the other. Whether it be consuming plant matter to be an herbivore, consuming animals or other Pokemon to be a carnivore, or consuming both and being an omnivore. Let's look at what a Pokemon food chain would look like in the Great Marsh in the Sinnoh region. A marsh is a wetland dominated by herbaceous plants and is often found near other larger bodies of water. Marshes are incredibly productive ecosystems, meaning that they create a large amount of plant biomass and are important for a variety of animals. At the very base of our food chain, we are going to have our producers. These are things like plants or other organisms that produce their own energy. In the Great Marsh, you have your plants such as grasses, reeds, sedges, and aquatic plants, but also you have Pokemon that are able to photosynthesize. These are things like Budu, Roselia, Shroomish, and Tangle. The next level of our food web is going to belong to our primary consumers. Things that eat your plants and some of your plant type Pokemon. In a marsh, most of this level is going to be occupied by invertebrates such as insects or snails. Animals are seen multiple times in the Pokemon universe, so I thought it was fair game to include them here since they would be such an integral part of this food web. Getting back on track, we were discussing primary consumers. In the Great Marsh, these would be Pokemon including Psyduck, Magikarp, Tropius, Bidoof and Bibberl, Starly, Kangaskhan, and Paris. Tropius represents our first Pokemon belonging to two different tropic levels. It can likely photosynthesize, being a grass type, but it also likely is an herbivore that feeds on some of the plants at the producer level. Our next trophic level belongs to our secondary consumers. This is our first level of predators because they are consumers that consume consumers. It's also important to note that many Pokemon are going to start fitting into multiple trophic levels. Some Pokemon might even consume others that share the same trophic level with them, such as Psyduck and Starly consuming invertebrates, even though they are all listed here as primary consumers. Pokemon that fit into this category include Meryl, Quagsire, Toxicroak, Barboach, Scaruppy, Wooper, Croagunk, Yanma, Kecleon, Staravia, and Hoot Hoot. Carnivine is another member belonging to multiple levels. It's a consumer as it's based off of carnivorous plants and likely feeds on insects or bug types, but it can also photosynthesize just like Tropius, making it also a producer. Next up, on top of secondary consumers, you have your tertiary and quaternary consumers. This level and beyond are going to belong to your apex predators. Examples include Gyarados preying on a variety of aquatic organisms, Noctowl eating a Meryl that might be eating fish, Arbok swallowing up a Kecleon that preys on insects, and so on, turning our food web into something that looks like this. Before we finish, we have one more essential part to any food web, and that is the detritivore. Detritivores or scavengers help clean up the environment by feeding on dead and decaying matter. Real world examples include mini funguses, scavenger beetles, worms, maggots, and things like vultures and hyenas. In the Great Marsh, we have shroomish eating decaying plant matter, barboach cleaning up any food that falls into the water, and gulpin taking care of terrestrial carcasses. Let me know what you all think about our first look into a functioning Pokemon food web. And if you want to see more videos like this, and if so, on what routes or zones in the Pokemon world. As always, thanks for watching and happy researching.